So I did want to kind of make a proper edited video of this, but I really just need to get this up so I can focus on 2019. And here's my best and worst films of 2018. I'm going to talk about the best list first because I only have five films in 28, that's from 2018, that deserve to be on the list. Okay, coming in at number five, we had The House with a Clock in the Tours. This was easily probably one of the most underrated films of 2018. A lot of people found this movie to be just okay. I actually really enjoyed this movie. I really loved the, I really loved the last like act of this film. Um, that's really where it got really jumped up and scary. I've never read the book, but I really, really enjoyed this film. I definitely think a lot of more people should be seeing this movie. If you didn't see it, definitely, um, like, just get, like, the DVD of it. In fact, I did buy the DVD of this movie. I loved it so much. So, yeah. <clears throat> the House of the Clock and the Tours at number five. Coming in number four, which is probably another movie that's not going to be in a lot of people's lists, and that is Bohemian Rhapsody. I love Queen, and so I was naturally excited to see this movie. But the funny thing is, is that I actually didn't know much of the history behind Freddie Mercury and Queen while seeing this film, so I guess it was kind of a good thing because I came in surprised to, I, I was surprised at the many things that were in this film, whether it was true or not. Um, um, I unfortunately I didn't get around to reviewing this movie. It was just I've been so because I saw this movie, which the movie came around the end of the year, it released released around November kind of thing, and so it's like I think about other movies I was trying to see at the time, um, and so I didn't really get a chance to review it because. Yeah, there was a ton of films around this time I needed to go see with The Grinch and, you know, and then it was like Robin Hood and other movies I needed to see. So, so unfortunately, yeah, I didn't get to review this, but definitely I love this movie so much. Um, I think if I had known the, um, I think if I had known the history behind Queen and Freddie Mercury, Probably some of the things that bothered most people may have bothered me. I don't know. So, yeah, definitely. I I definitely absolutely adored this film. I loved it so much. It's definitely each one of the best films of the year for me. It's my number four. Okay, so the top three. They're all animated films. And number three, we have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Okay, now, this to me was probably the... Was easily... Between this and Teen Titans Go to the Movies, by the way, that's an honorable mention, Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Um, this was easily the most surprising film I had seen all year because I didn't want to see this movie. Um, the trailers didn't look that interesting to me. Um, I think that maybe some people found it great entertainment by the trailers, but to me, the trailers just looked not that great. Um, and... And also, it's like, well, just by Sony Pictures Animation, I was just like, okay, this is going to suck. Because earlier on in the year, I had seen Peter Rabbit, and that sucked hell. Um, yeah, that really, I really hated that film. And so I was like, oh, God. Sony Pictures Animation didn't have a great track record for films. Um, yeah, I'd seen Hot to Transylvania Summer Vacation, which was pretty good. But I also seen Peter Rabbit, that was bad, as I said. So I naturally wasn't excited to see this film. But it surprised me. I loved like I loved the animation. It felt like you were living a real life comic book. I loved the story of Marvis Morales and the other kind of Spider Man people in their own world. I loved the villain. Um I think he's probably easily one of the best like movie animated villains I've scenes um I would say that he's actually probably better than Screen Slaver than Screen Slaver was in Incredibles 2 um I mean I loved him to Screen Slaver Incredibles 2 but Kingpin to me easily the best villain I've seen in a movie in a while coming at number 2 
we have Incredibles 2. Now, this is definitely one of the most an anticipated sequels, anticipated movies in a long time. When this, when the first, when the first movie was released in 2004, people loved it and they were just waiting, waiting for a sequel. And then we got some movies that were necessary to get, like, obviously, you know, there were movies like Up and, you know, um, like Ratatouille, um, Inside Out and Coco, which are necessary to make. They're all really great films. I love all those movies. But then we got ones like, you know, obviously got the Cars franchise, which was kind of unnecessary, especially Cars 2. Like, Cars, the first Cars movie and Cars 3, they're fine, but... The first, the second Cars movie was easily the worst Pixar movie ever made. So it's like, okay, are we gonna get this? You know, it's like, why do we have? Why do we have to get three Cars films before we got to Incredibles two? Why? Why do we have to? But it was definitely still worth the wait. I know a lot of people were disappointed in this film, especially with the villain screen slaver. Um, but. I thought the screen save was actually a, was actually a rather good villain. I mean, obviously, I th I, I, it's a tough toss up to say who's if Syndrome is better. Um, but overall, I do think Incredibles Two actually was better than the first movie. One of the biggest problems, as I said in my review, was that one of my big pop one of my big problems with the first movie was that it didn't really focus on the family too much. But in this one, it works out it. It panned out equally. Um, See, so yeah, Incredibles two easily one of the easily one of the best movies I've seen. Better than the better than the um, first movie. I would love to see Incredibles three. The ending does give a little clue to maybe there would be an Incredibles three. So if there is one, I don't want to have to wait as long as I did for this one. I know it was worth the wait, but I wouldn't want to wait. Another like 15 years for Incredibles 3. But number one best movie of the year, which is probably not a lot of people's radar, and it's um, I Love Dogs. Man, this movie was beautiful. I love this movie. Um, it's easily my favourite. It's not only my favourite movie of, the, of 2018, but it's among one of my favourite movies of all time. The story to this film, which is... I, the reason I picked this as my number one best is because we don't get many original animated movies. Um, I don't get many original movies nowadays. It's like, you know, everything's based... Like, don't get me wrong. I, I don't mind sometimes, you know, we get movies based on books and stuff, but it seems we've gone into this cycle where... We're basing movies of pretty much everything now, like, you know, just, not just, like, remakes and books. I mean, stuff like, you know, cartoons, video games, board games, um, or even, like, theme park rides. Um, and it seems that most of the time it can not be good. Uh, and so for this to have come out at the time it did was just it was the perfect time for it to come out because i mean especially that with the majority of the animated films are going to release this year i don't think any of them are, i don't think many of them are actually original like a lot of them are sequels uh which i don't know yeah we're getting a lot of animated sequels this year um but this movie was just beautiful i loved it all the dogs my number one bet favorite movie of 2018 so guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be so join me soon for my worst movies of twenty eighteen. Guys, movies would be good, movies would be bad. But I resume anyways. I'll see you later.